America's wild horses have been protected by an act of Congress since 1971, and that's allowed their population to explode. But the cost of protecting them has launched a fierce debate in Congress. Last week, House Republicans threatened to slash the budget of a federal program that spends some $80 million a year looking after the animals, even as their growing numbers pose problems for local ecosystems. Ariel Duem Ross traveled to Nevada to see that program in action. The Spanish brought the modern-day horse to America in the 1500s. Since then, they've been able to flourish, and more than half of them are in Nevada. But unlike deer and even wolves, hunting wild horses isn't allowed in the U.S. In fact, the federal government refuses to use lethal methods to reduce their numbers, mainly because Americans love their horses, and any mention of killing them inevitably causes an uproar. But according to some ecologists, this unchecked growth is a problem. From 2008 to 2014, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service partnered with a number of researchers who documented the damage wild horses had on a portion of open rangeland in northern Nevada. What they found is that feral horses caused significantly more damage to the environment compared with wildlife in the area. Jim Sedinger is an ecologist at the University of Nevada who is studying the impact wild horses have on the environment. We have 70,000 horses in nature, and if they're increasing at 15 to 20% per year, so we're making 14,000 new horses every year. And what that means is that we're making a lot of horses that we don't have any place to put. There's only really one solution to this problem, and that is to allow euthanasia of these animals. So you think that we should be able to kill the horses? Yes. The Bureau of Land Management has the lawful ability to euthanize wild horses to manage their population. But they don't do it. Instead, they use helicopters to round up the horses from the open range. From there, they're transported to holding facilities before being either adopted or shipped off to long-term enclosures. All of which cost the BLM roughly $51 million in 2015. In Nevada, this means the BLM has to remove thousands of wild horses from the rangeland each year. But some people think taking these horses out of the wild is cruel. Suzanne Roy is the campaign director for American Wild Horse Preservation, a group that actively opposes the BLM's wild horse roundups. The current management approach is um, inhumane. They stampede the horses, and the horses are forced to run for five, ten miles or more, then throw them into pens um, where most of them live in incarcerated, basically, for the rest of their lives. The helicopter roundups are totally traumatic for the horses. Many get injured. They tear their families apart. This is not the way the American people want our Mustangs treated. Suzanne and her fellow activists have an alternative strategy they think is better. Nancy Killian is a volunteer with Virginia Range Wild Horse Management an advocacy group which tries to manage wild horse populations by darting them with birth control out on the open range. A retired interior decorator, Nancy has been darting horses since 2015. She rarely misses. So what happens now? So now I take the dart, put it in the end of the gun. Now we go find the horse. This is not a sterilization program. Each mare needs to be darted every year for the birth control to work. To tell them apart and track their progress, Nancy and her fellow darters keep detailed records of every horse in the area. Well, that's definitely Dylan, but who's with him? Why'd you decide to get into this? Well, I've always been with the horse groups um, in the area, and I love the wild horses. You know, they're America's heritage. They've been here for many years, and they belong here. They belong on the land, wild and free. How many darters are there right now in this region? Six darters. And that's for a population of how many horses? Oh, uh, anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000. But according to wild horse and burrow specialist Alan Shepard, managing the horse population with only birth control isn't a viable solution because of the sheer number of horses that would need to be treated with fertility drugs on a regular basis. 
regardless of what fertility control you use, you're gonna still have population growth because you can't access all the animals. Why not use your lawful ability to euthanize these horses? That's a really touchy question, um, but the, ultimately it comes down to the direction of, of Congress. Why do you think Congress would be against the idea of using lethal methods to control a population? It's dealing with an icon. It's dealing with a piece of history. They have constituents that don't want to see it to happen. In September, the National Wild Horse and Burrow Advisory Board, a panel made up of members of the public, recommended that the BLM should kill the unadoptable horses kept in holding facilities. The recommendation was met with public outcry. In response, the BLM issued a statement that said the agency does not and will not euthanize healthy animals. You know, we're trying to do the right thing for the horses. We're trying to do the right thing for the public lands. You know, we're a multiple use agency. We can't allow one resource to damage the public lands for the decline of another user or resource. So we gotta take care of it. We may not be doing the greatest job right now, but we're, I think we're trying. 